I'm Terry Mason. I'm the editor of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine, and we're here at the beautiful Saw Ridge Inn in South Edmonton, and we have as our guest today, Jason Aldean. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me. You're up here in Alberta to perform at the Big Valley Jamboree this weekend. Is this your first visit to Canada? Uh, no, it's not our first visit to, uh, to Canada, but it is our first time doing the, the Big Valley Jamboree, and um, first, first ch chance we've had a ch to do this festival. And, uh, you know, we, we've tried to make it a point to, to get here to Canada, you know, every year, at least, even if it's just for a couple of shows, you know, try to get up here. And we're trying to get up here a little more, you know, more and more every year. So, uh, so hopefully it won't be the last time we play. You're traveling an interesting road right now, Jason. You came to Nashville as a songwriter and, uh, and not as a singer. What was that experience like? Well, I had, uh, I had a band in Georgia and um, and I was playing a little circuit of clubs down there and um, songwriting, I got offered a songwriting deal, uh, a publishing deal, which for me was basically a way to get my foot in the door. I mean, I always wanted to be an artist. That was, that was the ultimate goal. Um, you know, but I think in this business, you gotta take advantage of, of any opportunity that comes along and for me, that opportunity was to move to Nashville as a songwriter and uh, kind of get my foot in the door that way and, you know, make some connections and meet people there. And, and uh, ultimately that, you know, led to my, to my record deal. It, it took about six or seven years, but it finally happened. So, but, uh, but that was always the goal was to try to get there and, and be an artist and, and get a recording contract. And that's something I wanted to speak about. In the beginning, uh, you had a, a tough time getting heard, let alone signed. And now, what is it, like six, seven years later, you've got four albums out, two of them went platinum, one went gold, you've released 12 sing singles, and out of those 12, six were top number one hits, and the other six were in the top 10. Um, but looking back on this journey that you've been on to this point, what kept you going? You know, I think it was the fact that you know, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think it was the fact that I felt like, you know, that, that we had something really unique to bring to the table. Um, I didn't feel like there was anybody else out at the time that was, you know, was doing the kind of music that I was doing. Um, and I just kind of always felt like if I had, you know, if I could just get the opportunity to, you know, to be heard that, you know, I had a, a good a chance as anybody to, to make it happen, and and uh, and that's kind of that's kind of the way it went down. I mean, once I got my deal, you know, I um, I wanted to make sure I took advantage of of all the opportunities that came with that, and that if it didn't work, it wasn't for lack of effort, you know, uh, because it was tough to to get it going. And but um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's easy to get frustrated in the music business. Uh, you know, because it, it's easy for people to, to tell you no. Um, but at the same time, I mean, if you, you really feel deep down that, that uh, you've got something to offer and you believe in what you're trying to do, then, you know, you just got to stick, you know, hang in there, stick it out, and, and uh, take advantage of your opportunity when it, when it presents itself. Everything I've read about you speaks uh, about your loyalty and your stability. Like you married your high school sweetheart. You're still with the with Broken Bow Records, the first company that signed you. Uh, you have a beautiful young family, and you have a farm outside of Nashville. Yet many of your songs speak of loneliness and heartache. Where does that come from? You know, being on the road all the time. You know, you are away from your family and, and away from you know people that you love and people that you want to be with. And uh, so, so maybe it comes from that a little bit. I don't know. Um, you know, and, and even though. You know, I married my high school sweetheart. There, you know, there were still times where, you know, you experience heartbreak along the way, and uh, you know, no matter what that is, and, and uh, you know, for us, it was, it was a lot of breaking up and getting back together early on, like when we were kids. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, so I, I, I've witnessed my fair share of that kind of stuff too, and um, I don't know. I think that's just country music, though. You know, I think it's just. That, that's part of what makes country music appealing is because everybody, 
you know, everybody's dealt with that, I think, at some point or another. So, uh, you know, I, th I think that's what makes it appealing to people. Okay. For some, songwriting is a solitary pursuit, and for others, it's collaborative. Which works best for you? Uh, for me, it's kind of a collaborative thing. Um, you know, I, I like writing songs if I feel like I got something to say. You know, um, you know, I'm not one to sit down and try to force out a song just to do it. Um, but I always found that, you know, when I'm writing, you know, it's, it's an old saying, I mean, two heads are better than one kind of thing. It's like you get stuck on an idea and you can't get off of it. You know, having somebody else in the room there to throw out ideas to get you going again, that's, to me, seems to, to work better for me than, than me sitting down trying to write something by myself. The best athletes in the world have coaches, like the Olympic athletes, for example. Do you have coaches in anything, like such as uh, voice or guitar? No, none of that. What you <laughs> none of that. You know what? I took uh, I took about three voice lessons when I was a kid, uh -huh. and uh, I didn't like the stuff that she was trying to teach me. You know, scales and mm. and just wasn't just wasn't what I liked about music. Right. You know, I didn't. I wasn't into the technical aspect of it. Uh, guitar playing was the same way. I took about three guitar lessons and, again, trying to teach me scales and and I just wasn't into it. And uh, so for me, it was, you know, I learned to play guitar basically by ear. My dad taught me and, and then everything else I learned kind of by ear and singing, you know, how to, how to control my voice and, and what I can and can't do, I learned just playing clubs. You know, growing up, I started playing clubs at, at 14 years old. And, um, you know, and I think just over the years, you start to get comfortable with what you can and can't do. You, you start to figure it out. And, and versus me going in and, and singing some little riff that, you know, a voice teacher was trying to teach me, you know, I could go buy a songbook and learn how to play, you know, uh, a John Anderson song or an Alabama song and sing it and play it on guitar. And, and so that was just kind of how I learned to, to do all of it. Well, and that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about. You're a distinctive guitar player and you've got a touch of, of jazz uh, undertone and you've got blues undertone. Um, like, and that was what I was wondering, if you studied that musical style. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, where I'm from is, uh, you know, was, was a big melting pot of music. I mean, Otis Redding was from my hometown. Little Richard is from my hometown. The Allman Brothers, you know, I mean, it's like, so it, it was kind of like a melting pot of music there. Um, you know, so I grew up listening to country and rock and southern rock and blues and R&B and, uh, I mean, everything. So, you know, I, I think for me, yeah, I mean, my favorite singer of all time is probably Otis Redding. Um, you know, my favorite band of all time is Alabama. You know, so it's like my my influences couldn't be more. It's like somebody just took a deck of cards and scattered them across the table, and that's kind of my influence. It's it's pick up a card and it's it could be anything, you know. And um, so you know, and I and I guess when we're in the studio and, and recording my own music. I mean, I, I guess that you know, different styles of music kind of start to, to shine through a little bit, I don't know, but um, but like I said, I mean, I, I've just always had an appreciation for all of it. One thing I find that's really interesting, there seems to be quite a connection between, um, like obviously, songwriters and, and performing in concerts, but also songwriters and acting. Um, a number of, of musicians have made that leap, like Willie Nelson and uh, Johnny Cash and Dwight Yoakam. Uh, and now there's also a number of actors that have gone from acting into uh, performing, like um, Billy Bob Thornton and, and Kevin Costner. So I was wondering, is acting going to be a part of your future? Uh, maybe. You know, it's, it's funny because, uh, it's funny you would ask because it just recently we got pitched a movie script. Um, you know, a, a movie that's, that's getting ready to shoot later this year and, and asked if I wanted to, to be a part of it. And, you know, for me, it was something that, you know, I always said, it's like it's like with music. I mean, if I'm going to do a movie, I want it to be something that I think is cool, something that I yeah. that I would want to watch. That's right. So there has to be at least one car chase. 
Yeah, or, you know, <laughs> just so whatever it is that I think is cool. And, you know, and, um, you know, and for me to start off, it was like, I, I, if I do it, I want to start off something kind of small to see if it's even something that I'm into, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I sure don't want to go in and take over some big role and go in and try to, mm -hmm. you know, carry some sort of movie where I've never even acted yeah, before. Production. Yeah, yeah, so, which I don't know that that would happen anyway, but, <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we got offered a, a, a part in this little independent movie thing and and it's a you know it's kind of a part where I'm in the movie throughout the movie but it's not like a ton of speaking parts mm -hmm. so you know I kind of get to get my feet wet a little bit if I choose to do that and and um, so you know we're kind of looking at it but I, I definitely think it's something that I might be in interested in in the future and um, but like I said it all depends on you know on what it is and, and what I think about it and if it's something that you know, I feel like is is cool. I mean, it's you know, it's the same way with cutting records. I mean, I don't hear a song. I mean, if I hear a song, I think it's cool. Then I want to cut it. I want to do that. It gets me excited to do that. And I think movies would be the same way. What surprised you the most about the business of music? I guess the thing that surprised me most about the business is, uh, you know, I guess it's like anything. You know, it's it's. There's a lot of politics involved in the music oh, business, yeah. you know, but yeah. that's anything. Um, you know, and, and it's, I think, all of it really, because I always assumed that when you had a, a record deal, you went and you recorded your record and you, you know, went out and played your shows and you made a lot of money and that was about <laughs> the extent of it. That was it. And, uh, you know, but there's, you know, there's so much more to it than that. I mean, there's a lot of work that's involved in it that I don't think people see. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of late nights, early mornings, a lot of traveling, um, you know, a lot of having plans with your family and having to cancel at the last minute because you got, you know, something pops up and you got to go do that. And, and that's tough with children. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's, it's it's tough, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot of things like that that are, that are tough. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, that's why they call it the music business. Yeah, you know, exactly. Unfortunately, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's part of it. And uh, you got to kind of take the good with the bad sometimes and, and just know that it is what it is and you got to deal with it. And when are you back in studio, Jason? We are looking to go back in, I think, in October, early November. Um, start working on a new album. We're actually listening to songs for it now, uh, trying to narrow that down a little bit and uh, hopefully get in there in the fall. and. And uh, over the break, we'll have a couple months off. So hopefully by the time, you know, January, February rolls around, we'll have the album done, ready to go, and, um, you know, ready for a release, hopefully sometime next year. Rapid fire questions now. All right, shoot. You're a singer, songwriter, and musician. If you couldn't do that, what's your second career choice? Baseball player. If you could sing a duet with anyone in the world, living or dead, who would you choose? Ooh. Um, Probably Elvis. Ooh, yeah. Good one. What's the funniest thing that happened to you on stage? Funniest thing that's happened to me on stage um, would probably be one night I uh, I was telling the crowd good night, you know, and I was getting ready to leave the stage and was walking backwards and forgot there was a step there, so I tripped over the step and almost put my head through the the bass drum of my my drummer's drum set. And this was like on the Tim McGraw tour. So there was about 20,000 people that, that got to witness it. And uh, that, was, uh, that was probably the most embarrassing moment I've had on stage for sure. Nothing worse than people seeing the soles of your boots. Right, and YouTube is an, is an awesome thing. You get to relive it over and over. So is Jason Aldean your birth name? Uh, Aldean is my middle name. Were you named after someone? I was named after my granddaddy. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Do you have a nickname? I do. It's uh, everybody in my band uh, calls me the Peach. Oh yeah. Because I'm from Georgia, from so Georgia. you know. Uh, so it's it's usually the Peach or Peach, whatever. Right. So uh, somehow I got I got hammered with that nickname a few years back, and um, it's not a very cool one, but that's what it is. You were raised in Georgia and spent many of your summers in Florida with your dad. Now, if you had to choose, which would it be? Georgia peach pie or key lime pie? 
Uh, I'd, I'd probably have to say it'd be the key lime pie. Grilled steak, chicken steak, or tofu? Grilled steak. How old were you when you discovered you could sing? Um, I was probably about 12 or 13. Really? Yeah. I mean, when, when I realized that I was actually, could carry a tune, you know? Yeah. Because, I mean, people had told me I could before that, but it's just like, at that point, you're a kid, and you just, you know people are telling you that just because they want to hear you sing. Right, yeah. That's but uh, it wasn't until I was, you know, early teenager kind of thing that I, I, I actually thought, man, I guess I'm not too bad. I can actually carry a tune. I was probably 12, 13 years old. Your favorite sport to watch? Favorite sport to watch, uh, ooh, it's, a, it's a close race between uh, the Atlanta Braves, Major League Baseball, or um, college football. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's a team? Georgia Bulldogs. Ah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very close, very close race between the two. What's your favorite sport to play? Favorite sport to play is baseball. Have you ever experienced snow? I have, I've experienced snow here, which is not fun. <laughs> Was that last week? No. <laughs> this was about three or four years ago in Saskatchewan. <laughs> and snow was taller than my bus, which was not cool. Have you ever hired a band to perform at a party at your farm? Uh, no, but I have hired a karaoke guy to come out and, and run the karaoke machine. <laughs> I have had some karaoke parties at my house. Cowboy boots or hiking boots? Probably cowboy boots. Did you know that there's an entry about you on Wikipedia? Uh, I did know I'm on Wikipedia, yeah. Have you read it? I wrote it. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't write it. Uh, I have read it, actually. I always read that stuff to make sure it's accurate. Ah, that's... What do you think Kelly Clarkson was actually listening to on her, on her little earphones when you two sang the duet on the Country Music Awards? Well, I hope she was listening to the song. <laughs> um, I don't know. I know she had something in her eye. Uh, she started like tearing up toward the end of the song and I was like, man, I must be like, really like putting some passion into this thing, you know? And then after we got off stage, she goes, yeah, something's in my eye, I can't get it to stop watering. <laughs> so here, I, I thought I was actually bringing her to tears and she had something in her eye. <laughs> Do singers get vacation time? Yes. Not much, but yes. Where did you take your family on vacation last year? Uh, we always, we always take a trip to the beach down to Florida. Um, I, I have a house at the beach down there and so we uh, typically go down there. We actually went down this year for about a month okay. and, uh, and hung out for a month and, um, and that's, that's usually our big vacation. I'm actually taking my girls to Disney World this year too, so. It's great. Yeah. What do you raise on your farm in Nashville? Two kids. <laughs> <laughs> An uh, eight-year-old and a three-year-old. There you go. And, last and a question. dog. And a dog. And last question, Jason. Do your children know you're a singing star? Um, they do. They do. I, I don't know if they know to what extent at this point. Um, they just know that, you know, I'm on TV a lot and I hang out with Taylor Swift. And uh, I not really hang out, but I like... They, they see me at the same show with her, so, it's, so they think we're hanging out, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they know what I do, but I, th I don't think it's going to be until they get a little older that they actually put it all together and, and really understand it 100%, you know. But, uh, but, yeah, they come out to the shows, and they definitely know, you know, what I do for a living. And, um, you know, hopefully one day they'll, they'll know that I'm, I'm not just some old guy, that at one point I was kind of cool and younger. And thank you, Jason, for taking part in this interview. I really appreciate it. And good luck at Big Valley and, of course, in the rest of your career. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.